Right, now we've defined what Faraday's laws are and have our two equations to work from, it's time to see how these might appear in different questions. Here are a couple of examples. These examples are using our Q equals IT calculation, where Q is the charge in coulombs. Okay, remembering that our charge is given in the unit coulombs, which is given the unit C. I is our current in amps, and T is going to be our time in seconds. So these two examples use this formula. In the first one, we're told to calculate the quantity of electricity, the charge, Q, obtained when a current, I, of 25 amps, runs for one minute. Remembering first up that our time must be in seconds. So Q is what we're looking for. I, we've been given the value as 25 amps. Time, I need to convert from minutes into seconds, so will be 60 seconds. I'm going to substitute this into my Q equals I times T formula and get 25, 25 times 60 is 1,500 coulombs, is the amount of electricity that would be passed through this cell. For question two, we're going to calculate the current. So now we want to find I needed to provide 30,000 coulombs, Q, in five minutes. Again, time needs to be in seconds. So we're going to rearrange Q equals IT to find I, which means it's going to be Q over T. T is five minutes. So I'm going to take that five and multiply by 60 seconds per minute to give me 300 seconds. Then I'm going to substitute this into my equation. So I'm going to have my current, which is 30,000, divided, uh, sorry, my charge, which is 30,000, divided by 300. Okay, so 30,000 divided by 300 is going to give me 100, and my unit for current is amps. So I would need to run a current of 100 amps to get 30,000 coulombs in five minutes. So you can see we will use this equation to work out the amount of electricity that has passed through a cell or the amps of that cell that need to be produced in order to work that out, or even the time. So looking at question three, again, we're using Q is equal to IT. This time we're calculating the time required to produce 12,000 coulombs, so this is going to be Q using a current of 10 amps. So Q is 12,000 coulombs, my current is 10 amps, I'm going to solve to find T, so when we rearrange our equation we will get T is equal to Q divided by I, so we will get 1,200 seconds. In order to maintain correct significant figures, we should always convert our time back to the most reasonable unit. So 1,200 seconds divided by 60 is going to give us 20 minutes is the time required to produce 1,200 coulombs of electricity at 10 amps. And then looking at example four here, again using the same equation, this time we want to calculate the amount of electricity obtained, so we're going to be looking for Q, and then we want two moles of electrons. So this one's different now. Now we need to remember that we had the formula that the number of mole of electrons was equal to Q divided by Faraday. And Faraday is in our data booklet as 96,500 coulombs per mole. So we are going to be looking for Q. We'll rearrange this equation. Q is going to equal the number of mole of electrons multiplied by Faraday. So now we're going to have 2 multiplied by 96,500 per mole. So we're just going to multiply Faraday's constant by 2. and we will get a total charge of 193,000, so 193,000, 
and our unit for electrical charge is coulombs. Okay, so now we've looked at those examples, let's have a look at some electroplating examples. So this question is asking us to calculate the time required to deposit 56 grams of silver from a silver nitrate solution with a current of 4.5 amps. So the first thing that it wants us to do is calculate the moles of electrons required for the reaction, remembering that Ag plus plus one electron will give me one mole of Ag solid. Okay, so from this I know that the number of mole of silver is going to be equal to the number of mole of electrons that I need to pass through this cell. So the other way of saying this is that the number of mole of silver deposited is going to equal the number of mole of electrons. So N of silver solid is going to be equal to N of electrons because it's a one is to one ratio between electrons and silver. So this means that we can work out the number of mole of silver because I have a mass of silver. So that will be 56 grams divided by the molar mass of silver, which is going to be 107.9 from our periodic table, grams per mole. So this will give us 0.519 mole of silver, which is going to equal the number of mole of electrons. So this means that we can calculate the quantity of electricity. Q is equal to the number of electrons multiplied by Faraday's. So we will have 0. Point, Q is going to be equal to 0. 0.519 multiplied by Faraday's constant, 96,500. And this will give us a total of 50,083.5 coulombs. So now we've done this one, we know the total amount of charge in the cell, and then the time required is the next step, because remember this was what the question was asking us for overall. The time required is going to be equal to Q, the amount of charge, divided by the current. So this is going to be 50083.5, divided by the current, which is 4.5 amps, which is going to give us a total of a very large number of seconds, 11,129.67 seconds. And of course, we want to divide this by 60 to get into minutes. So if we take 11126.67 and divide by 60, that will give us minutes. And then if we divide by 60 again, that will give us hours. And when we do that, we will end up with 3.1 hours is how long it will take to deposit 56 grams of silver using a 4.5 amp current in an electrolytic cell. Okay, question two. I want you to have a go at doing this yourself. Now we're going to look for the mass of copper that would be deposited from a copper 2 sulfate using a current of 5 amps over 10 seconds. So remember, the first thing that we need to do is write our reduction equation to get our number of mole of electrons relevant to our number of mole of metal. Okay, um, so this is the equation that we're looking at. Then we're going to use Q equals IT and from there Faraday. So pause the video, have a go and then come back to see the solution. Okay, hopefully you were able to work this out. First step was to use Q equals IT to get five coulombs of charge, taking our I and multiplying by our time of 10 seconds. From there, we're going to take our number of coulombs, Q, 
using n of electrons is going to equal q divided by f. We're going to have 5 divided by 96,500, giving us a very small number of 5.18 times 10 to the negative 5 mole. From there, we can work out the number of mole of copper, remembering that I get one copper solid for every two electrons. So what I want, one over what I've got, two electrons, means that I'm going to multiply my number of electrons by a half to get 2.59 times 10 to the negative 5 mole of copper. Once I have that, I can multiply that by the molar mass of copper to get 1.65 times 10 to the negative 3 grams or 1.65 milligrams of copper will be deposited in this cell. Okay, let's have a look at a silver plating cell. This time we have been given a steady current, so I of 30 amps. Time is 20 minutes, so it's going to be 20 times 60 is going to be our number of seconds. So 1,200, and we're asked the mass of silver plated on the object at the cathode. Again, remembering this is silver, so it's going to be a 1 is to 1. So we can use Q equals IT, and we will get 30 multiplied by 1,200, okay, is going to be 36,000 coulombs. From this, we can now work out our number of mole of electrons that have passed through this cell by using Q divided by Faraday. So 36,000 divided by 96,500 is going to give us a total number of mole of 0 0.3731 mole of electrons. We need to look at the reduction reaction at the cathode for the plating, and this is plating silver, so Ag plus aqueous plus one electron is going to give us Ag solid plated at the cathode. So our number of mole of silver plated is going to equal the number of mole of electrons, which is 0 0.3731 mole. From here, we just use our number of mole is equal to mass divided by molar mass, or mass is equal to n times mr once we've rearranged it, to find the mass of silver, 3731, multiplied by 107.9 grams per mole, which is my molar mass of silver, to get 40.25 grams of silver metal being plated at the cathode. Hopefully these are seeming straightforward. Just a couple more examples if you want to uh, have a look. One more and then we will be done. So now this question is asking us again how long would it take to deposit a certain amount of copper. So we're going to be looking for the time. We've been given a mass of copper at the cathode of a copper plating cell. We are going to assume that we have Cu2 plus plus two electrons going to Cu solid. Always write your equation so the examiner knows which charge you're using if it hasn't been specified in the cell. We have a current of eight amps. So we don't have Q, we don't have T, we do have a mass of copper. So first things first, we can work out the number of mole of copper, because this is where we want to get to, is going to be 50 grams divided by 63.5 grams per mole. So this means that I want to be able to plate 0 0.787 mole of copper. The number of electrons that I will require to do that is going to be 2, what I want, over what I've got, one mole of copper. So multiply my mole of copper by two gives me 1.57 mole of electrons required. Remembering that the number of mole of electrons is equal to Q divided by F. So if I want to work out Q, Q is going to be equal to my number of electrons number of mole of electrons multiplied by Faraday's constant, which is 1.57 
multiplied by 96,500. From here, I will get a total value for Q of 152,000 coulombs. And I can now use my Q is equal to IT, rearrange for T to get T is equal to Q on I. So I will have 152,000 divided by 8 amps, because that was my current specified in the question. When we do this, we will get 19,000 seconds. And from here, we will divide in to find minutes and then hours. When you do that, you will get an eventual 5.27 hours to deposit 50 grams of copper at the cathode of this cell. So essentially now what we're doing is just applying these two, equ uh, two equations to questions. There is a number of questions that you can try in your textbook along with additional revision that you can use from Ed Rollo. And of course, as always, we will workshop some questions in class and I'll see you then.